Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Asian Psycho, aka Toast Sniper 98. So, welcome back to another, uh, the second part in my series on critiquing uh, Ina's gameplay. So, in case you haven't seen the first video of this series, uh, basically, recently, I think starting at the beginning of the month, um, Ina uh, from Hollow Live EN has uh, committed to playing through Camelot story from you know part one of FGO uh, on stream and so far I believe she's done about like six seven eight streams I forget exactly how many um, and so my intention uh, was with her uh, with her playthrough of Camelot and hopefully Babylonia as well um, is that I will critique all of her gameplay as she goes through Camelot and so the first video covered um, the first two fights that she did with Camelot uh, for for that FGO chapter, or for this FGO chapter, I should say, and uh, things have been pretty busy for me, so I haven't been able to go back and continue this series. But uh, I figured since I need some more content for my YouTube uh, to go up for today, uh, I decided might as well might as well continue this uh, series that and. Uh, I still have a thumbnail lying around for this that I might as well use. So here we go. Here's the second ha the second part of um, Ina's uh, journey through Camelot. So yeah, again, mainly I'm going through and critiquing her gameplay because I'd always known that um, that we'd always known that Ina was a big FGO whale, right? I don't think she's ever kept that secret. Um, if we're gonna go into her PL a little bit. Uh, which, you know, depending on how you feel, uh, may not be appropriate, but I think it's relevant for the sake of this video, uh, where we knew that she was, again, a big FGO whale before becoming a VTuber, and that, um, yeah, she played a ton of FGO JP uh, back in her day. And so I'd always been curious to know, like, okay, so if, she's, if she was, at least, a big FGO whale at some point, like, how much does she know of the game? Right? Does she, does she know how to play the game? Because a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know how to play FGO. Like, it's a very common complaint among uh, people who have tried FGO, where it's like, yeah, I don't know what the hell is going on. Right? Even people who, you know, keep up with FGO uh, loyally and on, and on a regular basis don't know how to play FGO. So, unfortunately, with the last video, with the, the first part of the series, um, yeah, you know, it doesn't really know how to play FGO either. Uh, however, I don't really hold that against her because, again, not many people do. And so I'm deciding to just use her journey to Camelot as a way to educate you guys on how to actually play FGO2 as she goes. So that way we have concrete examples on what to do and what not to do. So, um, yeah. Here we go with the uh, first fight on the second part, her part two of her Camelot journey. I believe it starts around here. So let's see what she does. I forgot. I totally forgot that she had a sword. This should be the <laughs> third battle, or the second uh, chapter. So her third battle. So I believe this node uh, is all assassins, and so she decides apparently to bring a grailed uh, melt, which is fine because alter egos are effective against cavalry class, which includes assassins. So let's see what let's see what she does. She's already started. She's starting with her usual uh, pair of Musashi and Waver. All right. Okay. Already a bit a big difference. So um, in the first video, I know the first video is, is like almost two hours long because I reacted to it live on stream. Hopefully this video won't be as long. But knowing me and me and my rambling and my ranting and so on and so forth, um, it'll probably be just as long. Uh, hopefully not, though. But in any case, already here's a huge improvement. Um, if you go and watch my first video and just pick out the parts of the first, uh, like the first turns of each of the two fights from last time, um, my critique was that she wasn't using Waver's defense buff right away. And now she does. Um, so it seems like she's learned her lesson there. Um, and hopefully she remembers that moving forward. But in a standard battle like this, Waver, you want to use Waver's defense buff right away. Because again, defense buffs prevent your characters from losing as much health, right? It's not the same as restoring health, obviously not, but the reason why it's not, not the same is because um, restoring health uh, doesn't really, it doesn't matter when you use it so long, well, it matters when you use it, but it matters more, it, it, you're supposed to use healing skills later, right, when you, when your characters have already lost health, whereas defense buffs, the mistake that Ina was making in the previous, uh, chapter, in the previous video, 
was that she was only using Waver's defense buff when she realized that her characters were getting low on health. Which is not when you're supposed to use it because at that point you've already lost a lot of health. And so it's like, well, you would have gained so much out of your defense buffs if you had used them right away. Because then, right, then your characters would hopefully not have lost as much health by the time you killed them. But the issue with Ina using Waver's defense buff, defense buff later was that she was already killing enemies and that she was also, she was therefore kind of wasting her defense buff, right? Because oftentimes she was, uh, when you when you kill an enemy wave, that counts as a wave, right? And so your buffs will tick down, will tick down uh, one turn in their durations. Uh, but for defense buffs, that's basically the equivalent of like wasting a turn on them because if they're not, if if they're, if your characters aren't getting hit with defense buffs up, you know they're not, they're not being used. So seeing Ina use Waver's defense buff right away this time, that's already a huge improvement. You want to use those as quickly as possible. Like, if you're in specifically in situations where you know you're not going to just, you know, blow through these waves in one turn, right? If you don't have an N1, N, uh, like, a, like a turn one NP ready to go, and you just launch it at them right away, then yeah, sure. Um, you don't need to use the defense buff that turn. You can use the next turn. But clearly, that's not the case here. So, yeah. You always want to use Waver's defense buff first. Right away in turn one. So Buster, quick Buster. This was, I don't know if this was intended, but this was, in, in terms of um, killing enemies, this was really, this was very, very optimal. Um, yeah, because she chose, what was it? Let me go over it again. Try to use my arrow keys to jump around here for a second. So she went with Buster, Quick Buster. Again, I don't know if this was intentional. She probably had a good idea because, you know, she's already sat on stream that, you know, oh, Buster is life or something like that. Um, but this is super optimal. Buster um, to lead off. And then Quick to hopefully, uh, Quick to uh, tar either target switch or finish off this enemy. And then, um, and then uh, melt Buster card to, to anchor. To finish off. Because that way... Uh, her, Melt's Buster card will be will get the uh, damage buff lead off bonus from uh, her first Buster, uh, and so that way she gets double kill here. She kills off two of the enemies. The only thing I would critique here is um, I would have liked to ideally what she have done. She, she would have done what she she should have done was she should have targeted the weakest enemy on the left. Um, instead, she forgot about her targeting and she just target she just left her uh, intended her target enemy um on the enemy on the right i said i worded that very badly but whatever i just woke up so apologies um instead again what she should have done was uh first select the hassan on the left because he has a less he has a least amount of health um the reasons for that is because in fgo i think i explained this in the last video um of the series but Cards, the, the cards that you start out with the first, so your point card, uh, have lower damage scaling compared to the cards that ha that come after them. Um, it goes from least damage scaling to the highest damage scaling the, uh, when you go left to right. Um, so Melt's first Buster card here, as you can see, uh, as, uh, as you see here, will deal the least amount of damage. I believe for Buster cards, uh, your first Buster card, if it's selected as point, only has a 150% damage scaling compared to when you have a, an Anchor Buster card, which is the Buster card on, the, on, on her third slot uh, as the last card in the chain, um, which deals uh, which deals 210% damage. So there's a huge difference in damage there just from what position they are in the chain. So because of that, ideally, what Ina should have done was you target the Hassan on the left first and then go with this chain. Uh, and that way she would have a much bigger chance of getting a double kill there. Um, thankfully, she ends up getting a double kill anyway. So it turns out there wasn't a much... There, I didn't need to worry about that. But... In a different scenario where enemies did have more health and Melt ended up not Melt, Melt and uh, Musashi ended up not ends up not killing 
their intended target, their, their first target, that means that Melt's Buster, third Buster card would be forced to attack the same target, right? Who would undoubtedly be very low health at that point, and therefore that would be kind of wasting uh, Melt's third Buster card's damage. The, the idea with the first two cards here is that you want to kill uh, the first target that you target. It's either Melt's first Buster card kills the target, or and um, because you're going into a new card after her, with the Musashi's bust, uh, quick card here, uh, it target switches. Because in FGO, um, if all the cards are from the same target, they won't target switch. Unless you throw in the MP in there somewhere. Um, NPs, character NPs, servant NPs rather, or uh, different cards from different servants, or cards from different servants, are the only ways to target switch in FGO. Uh, otherwise, if you have a full Brave Chain without an MP involved anywhere, um, there's no chance of a target switch. Uh, naturally, your character, your servant doing the chain um, will only hit that enemy until the turn is finished uh, because of because of a mechanic called overkill, uh, overgage, overkill, whatever, whichever one is appropriate. So uh, either you have Melt's first bust card kill and then uh, Musashi's card will target switch for you or uh, Musashi's uh, card will kill, will finish off the enemy that Melt's, Melt damaged heavily with the first buster card and then that way because Melt, you're, you're changing to Melt's third bust, uh, second buster card technically, uh, again... You know, you're changing uh, which cards are belonging to which servants again. That also would initiate a target switch. So that way, Melt can go target the next enemy in line. Or after the first enemy is killed. So, again, I don't know if that was intentional on on Ina's part. But it was a good call. This is, this in terms of just damage output, this is ideal. So as you can see, Melt damages, heavily damages the first enemy, and then Musashi finishes him off, and then Melt's able to kill the second enemy with her, um, what is it, with her second Buster card. And again, you see, uh, you saw that come into play here. Uh, let's see here if I can, uh, skipping around a little bit. Oh, I'm trying to capture this one right here, where this dude comes in and crits Melt. Yeah. So, again, a great reason why you're supposed to use Waver's defense buff right away is because you never know when enemies will crit you, right? Enemy crits are RNG-based. So, um, when they do crit, right, you want to have some sort of defense buff up so that way your characters don't take as much damage, as you can see here. If Ina didn't put up her defense buff, that means that Melt will be taking 20% more damage. 20% plus, like, I think 300%, 300 uh, flat damage or something like that. So, uh, yeah, again... Great call on her part to uh, put up the defense buff. So far, so good. Ah, it's one of those. Uh... Alright, let's see what she does. I see Musashi Brave Chain, and she goes ahead and decides to go for it. Um, here, Musashi's Brave Chain, I feel like, would completely overkill. Um... Yeah, she's a level 90 Musashi. Uh, her skills are only level 1, but she doesn't use any skills here, so that doesn't matter. Um, what is it? She might not have full foes. I don't expect her Musashi, her Musashi to be 1,000-1,000 uh, 1, 1, foed here. Uh, let me try to look Hi. at her cards again. Oh, I can. I forgot. I can just see them, see them on the bottom, right? So she ends up going with Musashi card, Musashi card, uh, Brave Chains, uh, B-A-B. Um, I feel like here... Uh, she could have killed both of them, I think. I f at least I feel like she could have. Because um, she could have used Waver's attack buff here. And that should give 20% to everybody. Assuming that her, her Waver skills are only at level 1, which I expect them to be. Um, they're certainly not at level 4 yet because of her uh, cooldowns. Because skills in FGO reduce their cooldown, max cooldown limits by 1 uh, when you get them to level 6. So they're definitely not level 6. Or they're not at level 6 yet. So, I feel like if she used Waver's attack buff here, um, and she used the Buster Chain here, so Musashi, Waver, Musashi, maybe she could have killed both of them? Or maybe, better yet, maybe in this situation she could have used Musashi's two Buster cards and then Waver's as Anchor. So that way Waver's uh, Buster card can do a ton of damage, being, on the, being, uh, being an Anchor card. And again, she would target target uh, the Hassan with the, with more health because you're using both the Musashi's Buster cards here. And remember, since you're using a Buster chain, they're getting m much more damage here, uh, like 50% extra damage, I believe. 
off a uh, off a Buster chain. So I would fe I feel like double Musashi Buster and Waver on point would definitely kill off these two, even with the both of her servants not being a uh, 1,000 1,000 fold yet. I feel like anyway, it'd be close. I think maybe Waver might not be able to kill. Actually, no, Waver might not be able to kill here because he's also only level 82. Not 82, as in like 82 T O O <laughs> English. But uh, yeah, maybe Mus maybe Musashi can kill, but not Waver. I'm not I'm not I'm actually not as confident in Waver getting a kill here. Now that I realize he's only level 80, but yeah. Because I think the reason why I say that, the reason why I'm sissing on that is because if you use, if you watch what um, chain, how the, how, what kind of chain Mus uh, Ina uses here, she goes with, bad still frame, she goes with um, Buster Arts Buster. Um, the reason why I think she should have gone with the Buster chain instead is because if she wants, because this will obviously kill, this chain will obviously kill. Um, and so ideally... Knowing that it's going to kill anyway, she should have gone with Buster Buster Arts to generate more NP, in my opinion. Hell, she could have even gone with Arts Buster Buster, but I think I'm more comfortable with um, Buster Buster Arts in this situation. Uh, because she, because her Arts card, by the time she gets to her Arts card, her two, two Buster cards should be doing a ton of damage. And so her Arts card should get, be able to get the um, MP generation bonus from uh, either overkilling or doing what's called the Musashi Bug, which is... A, which is it is kind of uh, kind of a complicated bug. Um, basically, the pr whole premise is that if you can get an uh, HP, enemy's HP down below half, and 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 one of your and your servant keeps attacking them past that, um, the game will will trigger uh, this bug that's kind of known as the Musashi bug because the dude who discovered it back in the day you discovered it with Musashi, I think, um, where it's kind of kind of uh, kind of you know coincidence that she's also using Musashi for this. Uh, anyways. Uh, so yeah, when you have a servant attack one enemy and they take off more than half their health, when they what as soon as their damage starts doing more uh, than half their H current HP, um, it triggers a bug in FGO where it's like you're getting uh, overkill bonuses anyway, even though you're not technically overkilling them in the first place. So um, yeah, that's why I'm more comfortable here with Buster Buster Arts for Musashi. Um, so yeah, because clearly she's not. Anyways, besides that tangent, uh, clearly she's not going for arts generation. Maybe she's trying to. Maybe in her head she's like, "Oh, I want to generate some MP for Musashi here." But if in that case, that's a mistake because she should have gone with Buster Buster Arts. Arts as anchor because then again, because cards in FGO um, perform the best when they're selected uh, further into a chain. So as anchor cards, all cards deal. Uh, the most amount of damage they generate the most amount of stars if they're po if, you know if they can do that arts can't um not not by default anyway and uh they generate the most amount of mp mp charge right mp generation so yeah she should have gone with bb bba here if that's what she was intending to because again as you'll see here musashi will definitely kill this guy uh very comfortably yeah it's not even a question <gasps> a pokey poke like Crony, she's 95% legs. I see nothing wrong with that. Okay, let's see what she does here. Let's see here. She's got two waiver cards. And then she's going, uh, what is it? Musashi and then two melts. Okay, so she's trying to generate uh, stars here. Um, the only, this is a good idea. The only problem is that Musashi might have a chance to crit. I mean, she's got 40% chance to crit. I think it's still okay because even if she crits, I don't think she'll be able to one shot this dude. Um, which means that Melt can then follow up with her quick cards. Let's see if she crits or not. Okay, no, she did. And even if she did, let's see, even if she did, Musashi leaves him that. with how much HP? Yeah, 9,000 HP. So in, in FGO, crits, do, crits automatically double your damage. And so, yeah, even if her even if she did get a crit here, the Hassan, Hassan would be would still be alive, so. And then, yeah, oh. you have Melt come in here with their crit cards, you, generates a lot of crit <laughs> stars here. So, yeah, good play. Alright, second wave. <laughs> There's five of them. Alright, let's see. Let's so, yeah, more, more Hassans here. They have more HP. Uh, let's see what her cards look like. Uh, triple Buster cards, one uh, Melt Quick, 
uh, one melt uh, buster here um, I would recommend using melts first skill because I believe her first skill generates stars it's a star bomb uh, she already has 19 stars thanks to melts two quick cards from before uh, and so that way how many stars does melt make at skill I, I assume this is a max skill level uh, melt I mean she's grailed after all um, I think it's either 15 or 20 De Assuming it's only 15, that's that still means she's getting like 34 stars. Um, so I expect a lot of them to go to Melt's uh, cards here, which would be which would be amazing if Melt gets a Buster card, even without a uh, even without uh, her attack buff here. Um, I believe that should be enough to one shot any of these uh, songs. Mm -hmm. So let's see what she does. Let's see if she let's see if Ina remembers what Melt's uh, skills do. Okay, perfect. Using a uh, waiver's attack buff here. Ooh, okay, so she just goes directly into Buster cards. Okay, well let's see how well this works out for her then. She just use at least she uses waiver's attack buff uh, here, but yeah, she just she decides to just go directly into uh, a full Buster chain here. Okay, she leaves the target. She leaves the target default at the Hassan on the right. Um... Again, I believe I mentioned something like this, uh, something similar before. But, uh, remember that Waver has class advantage against assassins. So even though he's lower level than Musashi, and, um, obviously his attack rating should also be lower than hers too. Uh, because true class advantage gives, uh, servants with the advantage double damage as well. Um, she should have started off with... Uh, Musashi's Buster first, and then Waver's uh, Buster, because Waver's Buster will undoubtedly do more damage here. Um, unless M M Musashi crits, which to be fair, Musashi does have a much better chance to crit than Waver, right, at 40% compared to Waver's 20. But I don't think I don't think Ina was thinking about that. So, in hindsight, I suppose this was, if she was gonna do a Buster chain, in hindsight I suppose this was, um, yeah, max damage, I suppose. Uh, assuming Musashi crits, and let's see, let's see if she does. This should be good enough. Okay. Okay, she doesn't, so I guess it didn't matter. And so, yeah, as you saw from uh, Melt critting with her 60%, yeah, she she's easily able to one-shot uh, any of these Hassans, I think. How much damage did Melt do there, anyway? Because it should have been, it should, it should, it should one-shot just, just about anybody okay. here. Boom, yeah, 45. Easy. Yeah, e she can easily crit anybody here. She doesn't even need her attack buff uh, off her second skill. Okay, so she gets a double kill. Still good. Nice. It's good Good RNG at the Hassan just kept attacking uh, Waver there. Uh, because obviously, in, in FGO, true class advantage means that your servants t uh, take uh, not only do double, double damage to uh, servants of a class that they have advantage over, but they also take half damage. So that was ideal for Waver to just be the, basically be the meat shield for that, for that Hassan there, because he takes less damage anyway. So you'd rather have Waver take the damage instead of uh, either Musashi or Melt. Because Melt being an alter ego, she does have an advantage over uh, the cavalry classes, but it's it's like half advantage. She only deals 50% uh, extra damage against, what was it, casters, riders, and assassins. And, um... And she doesn't take half damage from them. She takes full damage. Or full neutral damage, I should say. I should say. Don't poke so, me. So, good on Waver for taking the hits, I guess. Thanks, Waver. <laughs> Alright, let's see what's up now. So, full wave of Hassan now. Or full wave of Hassan's now that we got the reinforcements. Um, here, okay, I think... I, I see a Musashi a Brave Chain. Uh, I'm going to guess she's going to use a Musashi Brave Chain again. So, let's see, let's see if she does. Okay. Oh, she doesn't. Okay, that's surprising. So, what's I kind of I'm kind of curious as to what her uh, thought process here was, because she could have gone with the Musashi break chain. She did in, in the first turn or the first wave, um, but instead she tries going for melt uh, melt cards here. G given that she's going with her quick and arts card, I mean they're both her, they're all her cards this turn anyway. Um, this tells me she wants to generate she wants to generate a uh, melt charge. So, uh, yeah, with the Anchor Arts card. And so I assume, uh, assuming that Melt doesn't get lucky and crit with their uh, Arts card at the end, um, I assume she's planning on giving um, Melt Waver's first first uh, first skill, which is a 30% charge, to get her topped up. Uh, we'll see. Um, 
this won't kill the entire wave, obviously. So if let's see, this is turn five. Um, Melt has Mel has a Lancer deck, so this is her only Arts card. And but her quick cards, her quick card. No, she she doesn't have any more um, MP generation char uh, cards anymore because she we are we already saw her first quick card. She got her second and her only Arts card this turn. So yeah, uh, she'll only be seeing one more Busted card on on turn on turn six or on uh, yeah on turn six. So, Mel, unless she crits uh, with, it has to be your arts card. Even if she quit, crits with her quick card, if she only crits with her quick card and not her arts card, I don't think it'll be enough. Uh, she will still need waivers for spuff, uh, for skill, to get her topped up and get her, uh, get her MP. So she has to crit with her arts card here for her not to use waivers for skill, uh, going to like wave 3 or whatever. So, yeah. But let's see how much charge that Melt gets off this. Boom. She does crit. Okay. okay, okay. Uh, actually, even with the um, even with uh, the uh, arts crit, she still didn't generate quite enough. Oof. Assassin. I blame assassin classes. Um, but in any case, so she still she's still gonna have to use what was it? Uh, waivers is first first skill. Yeah. The only way for Melt to get her charge here for to get the rest of her charger is if all uh, all three of the Hassan's attacks on this turn. Uh, that's about to happen. They all target Melt because assuming Melt has standard uh, um, MP charge on defenses, which is when uh, servants get get MP charge from taking hits. Uh, the standard is three. Some servants can it, it can be different from servant to servant. Most of them have uh, most of them have three percent charge on hit. So three times three, three hits. Uh, that means that Melt can can get her MP charge right away. But they all have to hit Melt. Melt. But you know we'll see if that happens. And it didn't happen because they already attacked a uh, waiver and twice on Musashi. So, yeah, they didn't attack a uh, melt at all. So yeah, but Mel only gets one busted card here, so there's no way for her to charge up her NP going into turn into wave three. Then again, um, I'm not even sure if she can finish off wave one right away, because like all she has are waiver cards. And like she has one Musashi card, she has one Melt card. She would have to crit with Melt's um, Buster card, and then like maybe crit with her, uh, crit with Musashi's card for her to be able to uh, eliminate all enemies on this exact same turn. We'll see what she does. Yeah, she's not bothering using any skills either. So yeah, so this one, yeah, she, she's not going to be able to kill uh, the first um, Hassan. How much damage does Musashi do here? Yeah, even waiver crits, yeah, that's not quite enough. So I don't think I don't think uh, Ina was expecting uh, to be able to kill like damage a second yeah, second Hassan anyway. Uh, I think ideally in this situation, if Ina really wanted, I'm oh, skipping ahead on accident. If in the situation, if Ina was really trying to kill both these Hassans at the same time, I think she could have. Um, by again, remember Melt has a Star Bomb skill on a first skill. And then she gives, who was it? She gives her uh, Waver's first skill, which is a crit damage buff as well, as well as a charge, to Musashi instead. Um, and then we assume Melt crits the first enemy, uh, the 128k. And then she goes uh, Melt, um, Waver, one of Waver's arts card, whichever has the highest chance of crit, um, after Melt uses her Star Bomb skill uh, off her first skill. Um, and she ends, she anchors with Musashi's Buster card and prays that that crits too. But I don't think she was thinking quite that far, so. Yeah, she's just trying to kill one Hassan here. Which is fine. M uh, Musashi, Buster to start off, and then Melt uh, to finish. Guarantee the kill on at least one of the Hassans at least. Totally there, but... <gasps> Monstrous strength. Okay, you got the one last enemy on turn uh, on wave two. So what do you what do you do here? Uh, Maybe an arch chain, uh, arch chain won't actually kill Hassan here though is the issue, but she decides to go with it anyway. Okay, couple mistakes. Well, one big mistake that I saw her ju do just now. Where was the initial um, arch selection uh, or card selection here? Okay, so she goes with an arts ar 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 an arts chain. So she cl clearly she doesn't she wants to generate charge. Um, she wants she's just, she's not she's not worrying about killing this enemy right away. That's fine. Um, the issue here is that because you you she's already sacrificing um she's already giving up a turn an extra turn to generate charge. Like this is this is not the ideal um 
card order. Uh, because again, remember, I, I, I keep saying this, remember that cards uh, increase their efficacy or their efficiency the further along in a chain they are. So even though all arts cards generate 20% charge because it's an arts chain, um, Melt was already very close to her chain anyway, or to, to her MP anyway. Matter of fact, she, again, she was already at 91%. So she was going to get her MP no matter what anyway. Um, so she doesn't necessarily need the extra charge. And unless Ina is planning on getting getting Melt to 200% charge uh, in the first place, which that's not really a normal line of thinking in FGO. Like, it's very rare that you're intentionally getting a servant to, like, 200% charge. Um... Like, usually it's 100%, 100% that's it. Like, that's good enough. Uh, in, like, 99% of situations in FGO. Um, yeah. She should have started off with Melt's uh, Arts card instead. Because, again, Melt was already going to get her MP anyway, so you might as well give um, Waver or Musashi, ideally Musashi, uh, more of a chance to gain some MP charge. Mainly Musashi because just like Melt, Musashi also only has one Arts card. So when it does show up, you know, and you need Musashi to get a charge or to get MP uh, charge, then yeah, like you should seriously consider using Musashi's Arts card on that turn when it does show up. So it should have been opposite, the uh, flipped around. She should have started with Melt's Arts ca Arts card, then keep and, and then keep Mus um, keep Waver's card the same, and then finish with Musashi's Arts card so that Musashi has. Uh, can generate the most amount of charge for herself. Um, depending on how much charge Musa she gets here on her first, uh, here as Ina said it, um, she might not. It might not matter because again, Waver has still has his first card, first turn or first skill. Sorry. Uh, so let's see how much Musa, how much charge Musa she gets. Actually, no, this is already good enough because yeah, twenty percent charge. It's already good enough. So. In all honesty, doesn't doesn't really matter because waivers. Uh, who is it? Actually, no. It still would have mattered because um, th in this situation, now that I realize how much charge waiver just got, waiver. You sh she should have set waiver's card last then, because yeah, waiver gets a lot of charge per arts card, uh, an, an inordinate amount because he's a he's a year one servant and year one servants kind of weirdly balanced because back in the day, you know, the lightworks didn't know how to balance FGO, so. Yeah, she should have set Waver's Arts card as Anchor instead. Uh, so that maybe Waver himself could have gotten his own MP just naturally uh, off that. And then he can have his first, he can just use his first skill to top up Musashi, like I said. But in any case, she decided to go for the Arts Chain, give everybody on her team uh, some charge. Okay. And in case you're wondering why Mus uh, Melt. I should have probably addressed this early. In case you're wondering why Melt keeps taking 500 damage ever after every turn, she's got a she's got a craft essence called Black Grail. It's one of the best uh, craft essences in the game, um, where it gives uh, whoever's using it uh, or whoever's holding it a massive amount of MP damage buff. Uh, however, as a trade off, you get 500. You take your that that character that servant takes 500 damage every turn. Um, it can affect uh, longer battles, but like obviously in like three turn setups, if you're running Black Rail, it doesn't matter because everyone's dead at that point. So, in case you're wondering about that, but I'm assuming most of you already knew that. All right, this time it shouldn't really matter what she does. The Hassan is very close to death anyway. So, here ideally she should. Uh, yeah, I don't like this either. Uh, she decides to go with Waver Brave Chain here. Uh, this. Mm, I don't really like this. Uh, she should have gone with Waver uh, Musashi Waver instead, or Waver Waver Musashi. Probably Waver Waver Musashi. Actually, mm, either way, now that I think about it, either way. No, actually, what she should have done was start with uh, start with Musashi's Quick card, and then go into Waver Buster and Waver Quick. Is I think ideally how she should have done it. Maybe maybe even waver quick, Musashi quick, and then a waver Buster. Usually you don't want to start off with quick cards because quick lead off bonuses. Uh, the quick lead off bonus in FGO is the worst in the game. You ninety percent of the time you don't want to do it. But in this situation, because quick cards do the least amount of damage, um, you want to use both of uh, waver's uh, quick and uh, waver uh, Musashi's quick cards. So that way you generate the most amount of stars going into wave 3. That you can then complement with, again, Melt's uh, first skill, which she still hasn't used yet. So, um, yeah. Ideally, either quick Musa uh, quick uh, Waver, quick Musashi, and then Waver Buster. Or quick Musashi, 
uh, quick waiver and then uh, and then waiver buster, or I think ideally, uh, what is it? Quick uh, Musashi waiver buster and then waiver quick. I think would have been ideal because either any combination of these is enough to kill this guy off because he doesn't have that much health anymore, like only eight eighty five hundred. So yeah, he's very easily within one 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 chain range. But instead, she just decides to go for Waver uh, Arts uh, Arts Chain, which eh, I guess I understand that she's trying to go for Waver's. What is it? Uh, she's trying to charge up Waver's MP here, but eh. like he was already very close to that anyway. So if she wanted to charge up Waver's MP, then I think she should have gone with like she should have done some kind of chain where it includes one of Waver's Arts card and like some sort of quick card here somewhere, but. Eh, waiver, waiver, extra brave chain should generate some stars. I just don't know how many it'll it'll generate. Maybe like ten if she's lucky. Let's see how many. Yeah, not even. It's only at five. Yeah. So using the quick cards would have been better. All right. So her boss is uh, Hassan, uh, Hunter Face Hassan. So yeah, this should already be a done deal, and it didn't even matter anyway because um. Like, her getting her charge, her filling up Waver's MP, MP bar with the Brave Chain before didn't matter anyway because, yeah, his second skill just got off cooldown. So, and she and she uses Waver's uh, defense buff again. Yeah. So, yeah, that not, that not only would have filled up Waver's own MP bar, but it, it filled up uh, Musashi's as well. So, yeah. Uh, anyways, it's, it's not like it matters because, um, at least in this situation, because Belt will just absolutely shit on, um, Hunter Face Hassan here, so. This is already a done deal. Just use, um, Melt's Arts buff. Um, yeah, she should use Melt's Start skill because it's, it's an instant MP damage buff. Um, technically speaking, uh, you don't want to use Melt's Start skill on the same turn where you plan on throwing out multiple MPs at the same time, unless it's like a defensive or a utility MP like Waivers that does no damage. Uh, at least not on its own. Um, but because Musashi also has her MP up, that means that if Melt uses her third skill now, um, that means that uh, Musashi uh, will suffer the suffer a massive MP damage buff, uh, debuff, sorry, not buff, debuff. Things like 50% or something. Uh, however, that being said, Musashi does have a debuff cleanse off her third own third skill i think so actually it doesn't matter if she if melt uses her third skill but it is a matter of knowledge this is a knowledge check on on ina if she remembers that musashi has a debuff cleanse a self debuff cleanse rather so actually it is okay if she uses melt's uh third skill right away uh, but for anybody, any other dps who also wants to use their mp at the same turn as melt ideally you use melt's uh, third skill one turn ahead of time so that way they don't have to deal with the MP damage buff because as you can see here um, Melt get after her buff Melt gives herself an MP damage buff and damage buff for two turns Whereas the MP damage debuff that she gives on her team or her teammates uh, only lasts for one So that implies a degree of like like forward thinking so We'll see what Musa, uh, you know, does. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter in this it's in this situation because uh, Melt or has Black Grail. This is a Grail Melt. I assume she's also at B five. So, uh, yeah, this Lasana is fucking dead. <laughs> she's so dead. Let's see if she wants to go for the overkill anyway. Nah. Okay. So she just goes for uh, Melt. Uh, Melt Brave Chain here. So yeah, she starts off with the Buster card. Um, I've yeah. I know that before she she tried doing like Buster leadoffs on NPs um for for Buster NPs in those situations that doesn't matter uh if for example Melt's NP here was a Buster card her setting a Buster card first as point uh, as she does here that doesn't matter because I think Ina is under the impression that Buster leadoffs also the Buster leadoff bonus damage um that the rest of the chain gets also affects MPs that does that, that's not how it works MPs do not gain any such a uh, leadoff bonus, whether it's a Buster leadoff, an Arts leadoff, or a Quick leadoff, it doesn't matter for them. Um, so for Buster MPs, this is not ideal. You just you might as well just start with the Buster leadoff, uh, 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 the NP Buster leadoff, um, because it doesn't matter for them. Um, however, for Quick NP, Quick or Arts MPs, while the Arts or Quick MPs themselves won't benefit from the Buster damage leadoff bonus um, or Buster leadoff damage bonus. What will benefit is the rest of their chain. 
right? The, the follow-up buster card that uh, Ina sets. And then also, because this is a break chain, the extra attack that Melt will do, that also gets buffed by the buster leadoff. So damage-wise, this is actually optimal if you're using the buster leadoff on a quick NP. Uh, and Yeah, with a quick NP. Or an arts MP rather. It's only not. It's only suboptimal for Buster uh, NPs because again, they don't get affected. But I'm so I'm assuming that Ina is working off the assumption that oh yeah, if I lead off with a Buster card, that means that my MP will do more damage, which is not the case in FGO. That's a very common mistake that uh, yeah FGO players make. Which is unfortunate too because again, this is one of the many many things that FGO just does not tell you. Like, anywhere. Nowhere in this game does does FGO tell you that, oh yeah, by the way, starting off with a Buster Leo doesn't actually affect your MPs. So, I don't blame anybody for not knowing this. Again, FGO is a super old old game. It's an old, I would consider this an old school JRPG style game where, like, the game doesn't really teach you much of anything. And it's like, oh yeah, better learn this on your own, buddy. Or, I hope you know people who know what they're talking about. Or, people who know how to play this game. So... Yeah, it's very unfortunate. Second, oh, there's at the so very least, new them. age gacha <laughs> games these days, at least, you know, try try to there's teach so you how to play their own games. Enemies. But FGO, yeah, no, you're on your own, buddy. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to the second battle. Wow, 40 minutes to cover one fight. Oh, this is gonna this is gonna be a very long video too. Wow. Is it time for Baizaka. Alright. So she's going to the second uh, fight here. Let me quickly look up what the second fight is. Okay, so first wave has Lancer. Oh, this is basically a multi-class, uh, like a variety class um, battle. So, yeah, good call on the Berserker pick. <laughs> 120 God Juna, of course. Where's your limit broken case scope? <laughs> I'm disappointed. All right, let me skip, over, uh, skip ahead because this, this part is just story stuff. All right, let's move on to her second battle, or the second battle of this uh, of this particular uh, stream. All right, all right, all right. All right, let's see if she remembers to use uh, bu uh, Waver's bust the de defense buff. Okay, cool, she's learned. All right, hopefully she keeps that up. Uh, two battles in a row. All right, let's see what she started off with. Uh, Musashi Buster um, and Quick. Let me uh, back up real quick here. Uh, I kind of wish there were like a uh, YouTube like toggle function where um, you can skip forward uh, skip forward or skip back like only one second instead of five seconds okay so yeah she uses waivers defense buff there uh, take a look at her cards okay yeah I don't uh, her using Musashi's and God Juna's cards is fine because there's not much waiver can do here unless she was going for the assassin uh, and she wants to like charge a waiver skill but that's not obviously that's not on her that's on her that's not her priority so yeah and she, I, I believe, if I remember correctly, she goes with Musashi, Buster, and then Quick, and then and then Gajuna. Yeah, that makes sense because obviously uh, Musashi is good against uh, what is it? Good against Lancers. It's kind of a shame that Musashi didn't end up killing Shadow, um, who was a Shadow, uh, Spar uh, not Spartacus. Uh, he's from Sparta, Leonidas. Uh, with their Buster card, it's very close. If I'm assuming again, Musashi here isn't Fode, uh, 1000, 1000 Fode. If she had been, then this would have been a kill off of her, um, her Buster card immediately. And so she could have staggered that. Uh, then in hindsight, she could have staggered her chain by using God Juna's Buster card second instead of, um, instead of third. So that way, Musashi's Quick card can get some damage in here too. Uh, ultimately, it doesn't matter because how on earth would you have known, right? How I I obviously don't expect Ina to know like the intricacies of how much damage, how much exact damage servants do because in this game, in case you didn't real, in case you didn't notice, um, all damage is RNG. Uh, every source of damage, even on even even the en the damage that enemies do, uh, have a ten percent um RNG spectrum, uh, both going both ways. So the difference between how much uh, what their what the minimum damage they do and the maximum damage do they do, it's about twenty percent. Um difference which is huge <laughs> so but yeah, it just it just so happened that musashi didn't didn't kill here uh, and honestly i couldn't tell you if this amount of damage um is like the low uh threshold or the thri uh, or the high threshold sorry english is hard but in any case that's fine 
Because even if she did, technically speaking, even if she did stagger it with the um, God Juno's Buster card, like Musashi's quick card no will no longer be dealing uh, double damage because she's gonna. It would target switch to who is it? It would target switch to the Shadow Servant. Um, yeah. So how would she? How could she have known? So, in hindsight, this is good because that way she get that way she gets a double kill. With um, who is it? Uh, with the. Uh, God Juna killing. What there's an anchor busted card, so that was good. Mm, oh, okay. Alright, so Nita Chris's uh, well, mirror. 51k HP. Uh, she's not using any skills, or at least she probably doesn't plan on it. Uh, oh, this is easy. God Juna, God Juna Break Junior. This is pretty this is pretty uh this is pretty easy. Ooh, okay. So God Juna will will easily kill here. Um, he, this is a 120 God Juna, the max level you can have a character in the game. I assume he's also MP5, but then again, MP level doesn't really, doesn't really matter here. Uh, matter here in this context, uh, it only MP level only dictates how much damage your MP does, not card damage. But here, God Juna will it will will kill 100%. This Nita Chris Mirror is is deader than dead. Um, because of that, because as long as God Juna starts off with his Buster card, it doesn't matter what uh, it well, yeah, it doesn't matter what order his other cards come afterwards are in terms of damage. That means that ideally, Ina should have uh, set the her order as Buster Arts Quick instead of what she did now, which was Buster Quick Arts. Because again, if you're gonna kill anyway, as long as you lead off with a Buster, you might as well get as much stars as you can out of it. And so she should have put. Her, his but his quick card as anchor instead because again uh quick cards all cards do their jobs most efficiently when they're put um at the end of the chain so had she put god Juna's quick card as anchor then it would have generated the most amount of stars right going into wave two and right and even though god Juna isn't really you know he's not really known as a star generator obviously um even the difference, even the small difference between like, oh, how many quick cards his his quick card can make on second position in mid, um, as opposed to at being placed on anchor, that can make a difference, right? Like, obviously, it's a much uh, you're more, much more likely to crit with the 60 percent crit chance rather than a forty percent. So yeah, it should have uh, ended with a quick card instead, but whatever. And again, God Juno already has MP ready to go, so ending with Arts card and ending with his Arts card wouldn't have mattered from an MP generation perspective well, either. Up, oh, yeah, it, it was it's it was gonna kill. Um, extra brave chains are very powerful in FGO because extra chains have a guaranteed two hundred percent uh damage scaling modifier. Um, and again, compare that to uh. Anch uh, anchor Buster cards that have 210, so extra cards are very strong in um, in FGO. Don't underestimate uh, extra cards, especially not from like you know b uh, Berserker servants or anybody who's hitting um, a double advantage or hitting true advantage. So yeah, that Ina didn't have anything to worry about there. That was gonna kill either way, or that was gonna kill 100%. Okay, let's take a look at talk cards. Uh, Waver Brave Chain, but she does have access to a Buster ch a Buster Chain as well. Um, in this situation, let's see. I assume she wants to keep uh, God Juna's NP for Wave Three, which obviously good call because servants are strongest at Wave Three. So in this say in this case, I would I would highly re highly recommend her. To, let's see, she's got 14 stars here. She doesn't, unfortunately, she doesn't have any star generation skills like, or star bomb skills where, like, it's a skill that pops stars right away on your current turn. Um, however, she does have 14 stars and she has a, um, uh, she has one Gajuna Buster card. Gajuna's second skill is a 30% charge and, in this case, more importantly, it's a star gather skill specifically for his Buster cards. So, 100%, he's getting an instant, he's getting a guaranteed crit on his one Buster card because it's the only card on the, on the field uh, on this turn. So, his skill will, gener will, will, will attract all the stars to his card only. Um, and so yeah, it, he'll guarantee he'll guarantee himself a Buster crit, uh, Buster crit for himself. So in this situation, ideally, I think what she should do is kill off the Neocrest because Neocrest has the most amount of HP here, um, and she uses Godjuna to do it. Uh, Godjuna 
uh, point card where she put, uses it first. Uh, and then she goes into Musashi and then finishes with the um, with, uh, Waver's card. So in order to guarantee it, I, wanted, I, I, would, I would argue that she, she wants to use Waver's uh, attack buff. Use uh, Gajuna's first skill as well because that's, an, that's a 30% attack buff for three turns as well. Use obviously his second skill, uh, and then maybe hold. Up. Actually, use Musashi's Buster car, Buster uh, buff here too. Her second skill with the Invul Pierce, because you're going to be using Gajia's MP on third turn anyway, and that's going to automatically kill anybody, no matter how you look, how you look at it. Um, and he'll still get. You'll still hopefully still have Waver's bust, uh, attack buff and Gajuna's attack buff going to Wave three anyway. So yeah, ideally, I don't think this would in, this would one shot. Uh, or I don't think she can one turn uh, the second wave here, uh, but she'll at least kill out the Nidocris mirror and everything else. Uh, whoever doesn't get killed here is gonna be easy. Is e is gonna be easy pickings. So let's see what she does. Okay. Maybe I should have saved it till the end. Oh well. Okay. Yep. She's doing exactly what I, what I said she would. Oh, it's not a guarantee. That's that kind of sucks. I assume these are max skills on on God Juna because they they have to be. Like, why would you not max level your uh, max skill level your your 120 God Juna? Uh, let me check their their skill cooldowns here. Yeah, they, they are they are max level five, five. Yeah. So oh, uh, that's unfortunate. So again, this is where in the previous wave where she used remember when she you know used um God Juna's Brave Chain? That's the difference right there. I just talked about it, right? That's the difference. If she had set uh God Juna's quick card as anchor instead of mid, uh middle position, then she should she would have guaranteed uh God Juna's crit here. So every little bit counts. Because now instead of being a guaranteed crit, now it's only a 90%. And you'd be surprised how often 90% crits a whiff in FGO. They whiff more often than you think. So never trust a never fully trust a crit. Oh, there she does. There she goes doing that again. Um, never fully trust a crit if it's not 100%. Uh, 90% chances. A uh, 90% chance to crit. Oh yeah, must be 50% chance to not crit. Uh, anyways, uh, once again she's doing that mistake again, right? This is the perfect example of what I talked about in the last fight, where she decides to go with Musashi um, Buster leadoff into using a Buster MP. No. Again and again and again, this does not work. This is not how it works. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't know. So there's no point in using a Buster leadoff to, quote, buff a Buster MP. This is not how it works. It, the MP does not get buffed at all, so there's no point in even doing it. Neither does uh, neither do Buster MPs get the damage bonus from the Buster Chain, because remember, bus, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Buster Chains like these um, give, I believe, like a 50% damage increase uh, or something like that, if I recall correctly. Anyway, uh, to all the Buster cards involved, unless they're an NP. MPs don't that the Buster Chain bonus does not apply either. So either way. Either with the Buster leadoff or with the Buster chain, the MP is not going to do any more damage. It doesn't apply. So yeah, Ina just ke keeps making my mistake, but obviously, you know, I can't tell her over the internet that yeah, yeah, doing this is not actually right. I can't. I actually kind of wonder at this point how many times her chats tried telling her that like, yeah, this doesn't work. <laughs> but I don't know. Most most FGO players don't actually know how to play the game properly or like optimally either. So mm, whatever. So again, this doesn't really work. God Juna's MP was gonna kill her anyway. Um, and yeah, I kind of wonder why she was trying to, why she's trying to kill uh, Wave Two with God Juna's MP. Because that means that she's not gonna have God Juna's MP going into Wave Three, so she's gonna have to charge it up the good old-fashioned way. I mean, she sh she still has Waver's third skill her his attack buff and his first buff setup so that's 40 percent charge right there but yeah if that were the case why did she even use wave uh, god a second skill because at the very least if she didn't use god a second skill uh and save it for wave two or wave three then at the very least she'll have 70 percent and that's a that's a lot more manageable than uh only 40 percent considering she just got god arts card here so mm, definitely could have played that better but let's see what she does in wave three. Uh, wave three, Nidacris, and then a Chimera. 
Uh, the Chimera is a very, very big threat because the Chimera, I believe, has a higher chance to crit. And remember, this is a Berserker, so he, it does 50% damage um, against your servants too, against everybody. So, uh, yeah, because she no longer has God Juna's MP to just kill, this, uh, kill that motherfucker uh, right off the bat, she has to focus down uh, the Chimera no, no matter what, at least for now, because the Chimera is a huge threat. <laughs> no brave chain unfortunately but she at least has two musashi cards and two gajuna cards and her uh, gajuna buster card has a crit ready to go so i would say pop waver's attack buff and his first skill use his first skill on gajuna and go to town and kill the uh, chimera right away but clearly she's not thinking about that <laughs> okay. this will probably kill anyway though as long as it crits yeah because it's a, again, it's a it's a 120 God Juna. But remember that crit damage buffs in this game are extremely powerful. All right, all right. Uh, and even at level one, uh, Waver's crit damage buff is still 30. percent That's a huge bonus. So, anyways, now what you now what does she want to do? She's already taken care of the threat. It's good that she ident identified the Chimera as the big threat because she probably uh, she probably remembers from experience how annoying Chimeras are to uh, deal with because they if you let them go unchecked they can like just crit your servants over and over and over and nobody wants that so. Okay, she goes for max damage here instead of the waver chain. Arguably, I would have argued that a uh, uh, what is it an a waver chain would have been better here. Let's see. Uh, she didn't have she didn't have Waver's second arts card, but which which kind of sucks. But um, again, Waver generates a lot of charge off his uh, arts cards, a lot, uh, very much so. So like trying to go for max damage with the Buster Chain here, um, like I mean the chain itself was 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 good if she was trying to go for max damage here. But instead, Nidocris has 200,000 200, HP. When you're dealing with enemies with this much HP, um, car like regular unbuffed face cards don't don't really do jack shit. Especially right now, you notice Nidocris is, are, already has three charge, three ticks of MP charge. If Nidocris gets her MP off, like most of these characters are fucking dead. Uh, the only character who would survive guarantee would be Gajuna because he has a guts. Nidocris's MP has a chance to insta kill. So even if um, even if Musashi uses her invul skill, insta kill goes through uh, goes through hard defense skills. The only counter to insta kill is guts, which God Juna has. So, so tech on on paper or in practice too, uh, God Juna is the only one who can reliably survive uh, Nidocris's NP. And I believe Nidocris used her uh, charge skill, which as an enemy, if she's an enemy, it gives her two ticks of MP. So normally, enemy casters are usually kind of pushovers because it takes a it normally takes them a very long time to get their NP five ticks as opposed to four for a lot um, for most classes and then three for like if you're um, say uh, a Lance? No, Archer, not Lance. Lancer's st standard 4 tick for enemies. Uh, Archer's have 3, so they're a threat. Um, assassins, I believe, are also 3, so that makes them a threat too. Uh, I forget who else also has a 3 tick MP. Maybe one of the extra classes? I forget. Um, but yeah, Nidocris is, is an exception, however, because she has a skill that gives her massive amounts of charge as a player, b both as a, pl as a playable character and an enemy. So if she spams that, if you get bad RNG and she just spams that, uh, that, that skill, um, yeah, she can have her MP ready by turn two or on the second turn that you fight her. And obviously that is a huge, um, that, that's a big problem. That's a huge problem. Because she has an AoE MP, which also has a chance to insta-kill. Um, and insta-kill works way better against your servants than it does for you. Against enemies, usually, most of the time. And it's against, like, enemy servants. Enemy servants you can forget about trying to insta-kill them. Um, and a lot of, even a lot of, like, uh, like gold, like, gold class uh, enemies, too. Like, oh, insta-kill only really reliably works against, like, bronze class, um, bronze type enemies. And even then, there are certain, um... There are certain enemies that you'd rather use insta kill against because they are much more reliable to insta kill than even other bronze type enemies too, like skeletons and stuff like that. So, in any case, uh, yeah, I would recommend just charging up Waver's MP, uh, so that way he gains access to his, he, he gets his own ult, or his own NP ult, playing too much Star Rail, 
And uh, so, yeah, at least that way you can use Waver's MP as utility because even at MP1, I assume she hasn't done... Um, actually, if she hasn't done Waver's MP buff quest yet... And assuming Waver's only MP1 himself, actually, how much how much defense debuff does he even give then? Only 10%? It's actually not that much at all. Yeah, now that I, now that I think about it. Huh. So maybe in her case, I'm assuming that her Waver is completely unbuffed and not, not beefed up at all. Um, yeah, that's kind of an issue. <laughs> Oops. So, I guess in her case, inadvertently, uh, trying to go for max damage here would actually not be a bad idea. But at the very least, even 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 if Waver's MP doesn't give that much of a defense boost because of how weak he is, um, it, it'll still reduce one charge, uh, and it might have a chance to stun Nidacris, which might be clutch, which might come in clutch for her. Because um, yeah, I would I would kind I would expect Waver here if she had gone with his um, his what is it his chain his brave chain I would assume. He generates like around anywhere from like 25 to like 40 percent charge. Um, he is attacking Nidorkus, who's a caster, and if, when you attack uh, caster enemies, you get the biggest bonus in MP, gen MP generation uh, out of all all other classes in the game. So any anytime you use an arts card against uh, arts cards against uh, casters, you get more MP gen MP MP bonus um, as kind of like a hidden mechanic of this game. So. Um, I would expect Waver's Brave Chain to at least get him 40% 40 charge, or get him to 40% charge, ideally 50%. Um, and then, yeah, that way he's a lot, it's a lot easier for him to reach his MP by, like, turn 2, or by, like, you know, the second turn or third turn of this fight, but... Oh, well, she goes, she's, she decides to go with the, the Buster, Buster card, or Buster here. Chain instead. And at least Musashi ha does have Good. chances of crit there, with the 30% as uh, Anchor, so... I mean, I know where she's coming from with this. At the very least, I would have liked to see wa her use Waver's first first skill on um, Musashi. So in case she does crit, at least she'll be able to do more crit damage. This is a thing that I've noticed with Ina that is that she doesn't pay attention to her skills, and like she ends a lot of her fights not using her skills at all, which is kind of a waste because like you might as well use them, right? Anyways. So she decides, she decides to go for max damage anyway. Again, this is really going to do much damage. She did, Again, she got lucky with um, Musashi's crit there. So had she used Waver's crit damage buff on Musashi, she would have done more damage. Um, there's a caveat to that, but I think that's a little bit too complicated for now. Just know that, you know, if if she had used Waver's crit damage buff on Musashi, if she had crit anyway, um, she would have done a lot more damage there. Okay. She uses. She finally uses Waver's uh, attack buff here. Uh, okay. Where did Where did Gajuna get that much damage? Did she? Oh, okay. Yeah, she got very lucky here. Cause Nidacris ends ended up attacking Gajuna, I think, multiple times because she Gajuna only starts with seven percent. Yeah, she attacks him once and attacks him twice. Okay, she got very lucky here. Um, Berserkers and FGO, uh, I mentioned the whole, like, the MP charge on defense mechanic, where your servants gain charge, um, they, ha they have a stat that determines how much charge they get, um, based on, like, when they get hit. Um, that mechanic is based on is based off of individual hits. So because Nita Chris's cards, I believe all her cards have multiple hits on them, especially her quick and her what, what did she use? I think she used, like, at least a quick card. I, th I recognize a quick card there. I assume she used a quick... Oh, this is an arts card. Yeah, and that's, like, what? Three hit, three hit, whatever? And this is a second arts card. Yeah, she didn't, she didn't use a quick card here. So because her... Nina Chris's cards are multi-hit, um... And again, the servant... MP charge on defense mechanic works also works off of individual hits that and, and combine that with Gajuna being a berserker and berserkers have higher than average uh, MP charge on defense stats. The, again, the standard is three three percent per hit, but berserkers usually have five percent per hit. So because Gajuna got hit twice, that means that he was able to go from seven percent charge all the way to forty nine. So she actually got very lucky here, in my opinion. Um, so that means she notices this, Eno notices this, and she uses Waver's cards immediately, okay, okay. which is good. So yeah, she gets another 10% charge. 
and she gets 30% charge there. So now she's almost, she's very close to God, Jun God Juna's next turn. Alright, she's pulling up Pluck Suit. She might want to use Stun. She might have, yeah, she might as well use Stun here because you have God Juna's uh, Quick Card here. Might as, might, matter of fact, you have his Brave Chain right away. So just use... Um, Buster, Buster, Quick, or Buster, Quick, Buster, doesn't matter. God Juna's getting his turn, uh, next turn, no matter what, I think. He should, anyway. He's fighting a caster here. So his Quick card, as long as she doesn't set it as her point card, for whatever dumb reason, um, she should, God Juna should get his MP fully charged here, right away. So, yeah. she might, and when he gets his MP, oh yeah, Nita Chris is fucking dead. Like, there's no, there's no way about it. At least I don't, I, I, she should be dead. Um... Yeah, she should be dead. He's getting, um... Gajuna's getting the, uh, what is it? Gajuna's getting, uh, Waver's attack buff. Then again, though, Waver doesn't have his first skill up. And his first skill is very pivotal to his damage because of its, uh... It, but because of its power mod, uh, bonus against debuff enemies. So, and now that I think about it, 160... Now, this is, this is still a god... This is a, this is a perfect Gajuna where he's level 120. It, it should still kill. This should still kill, even with um a level one waiver waiver attack buff, which is only twenty percent. Because she can use plug soup uh, attack buff too on the same turn that God Juna uses MP. So I would say stun Nita Chris here with plug soup, which is the second skill in the middle here, where where my, where my cursor is. Um, use uh who is it? God Juna's uh, brave chain. Uh, and then on uh, the turn after, when after you stun Nidacris, uh, so that way she doesn't act this turn, so you can save time and prevent. You make sure you know no nothing happens where like Nidacris gets like two lucky crits and kills God Juna uh, on this turn, which is still possible, I think. Um, yeah, and you go into next the next turn with God Juna's MP locked and loaded, and just blast the fuck out of Nidacris. But let's see what she decides to do. Okay, she she does she uh, she's obviously she's obviously not thinking about trying to stun um, Nita Chris here. That's a good idea. Guts prevents the contingency of Nita Chris like critting him twice in a row or something, which can happen. Very rare, but uh, it could happen. Yeah. Okay. Good. The, again, doesn't matter what uh, order her uh, God Juna chain here is. She should it still it should still get. Uh, God Juna is his, his MP, thanks to his extra attack. Because extra attacks do generate a little bit of MP, but barely so. And then, yeah. She has to kill uh, Nita Chris here, otherwise, Nita Chris is using her MP, and Waver's probably dead, Musashi's probably dead. Uh, God Juna will survive because, uh, thanks to his guts. Gander, again, she should use that last turn because, again, God Juna will absolutely kill here. Now that he's, um, now that she, now that Ina's reduced the enemy Nita Chris's HP down by half thanks to God Juna's Brave Chain, um, his MP will absolutely kill here. It, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, she should have used her, uh, stun last turn because, again, if this is gonna kill, what's the, what's the point of stunning Nita Chris now? So, should have used that the last turn, but at least she understands that, you know, that's a thing that she can do. Uh, attack buff, good. And then, yeah, she just Let's goes into God Juna MP. Juna oh, she's going to, uh, longer. lead off with a Buster card now, isn't she? Let's see, let's see if she does. She's thinking no, about Buster. it. <laughs> she, she's thinking about it. Okay, she decides against because there are there are crits there. The reason, again, we probably already know why she she was hesitating there. She was thinking about uh, whether or not she should set uh, the forty percent Musashi Buster as lead off again for like the third or fourth time. I will keep saying this just to drill this in everybody's heads. Um, Buster lead off uh, damage bonuses do not work on NPs. They don't. Please don't do it. Uh, in this case, Ina decides against it because uh, she recognizes that she has good chances to crit, especially the second, uh, the anchor Musashi card, which is has a guaranteed crit. So uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> that's the only reason why the the only so reason why she didn't do that is because of crits. <laughs> but guaranteed, if there were no crits on Musashi, then um, she would have she would have done what she did before and lead off with Buster cards. So I hope her chat at some point teaches her. That that's not what you're supposed to do. Oh, never mind. You know, ended the fight. But yeah, <laughs> maybe at some point she'll learn. 
But until then, I will keep saying that over and over. Buster leadoffs don't affect MPs. Neither do buster chains. So, yeah. Only skill buffs uh, or like MP, like the buffs you get from servants using their own MPs uh, apply. Or, you know, your mystic code or whatever. Only those and, of course, um, your craft essences. So, yeah. And cute, uh, kind of cute hearing uh, Ina say she didn't expect Gajuna to kill. No, Gajuna did really just does that much damage. He would have done more damage if his first skill was active, but you know. It's, remember, this is also a 120 Gajuna, <laughs> which is insane. Anyways, let's go into her uh, into a next fight. God damn, this is a long ass fight. I've, been I've already been yapping for over an hour. Oh, we're into this to the end, so whatever. Okay, this should be your next fight, and this should be oh, this should be a relatively short fight, <laughs> relatively, um, because this is just a solo fight against a three hundred forty-four thousand HP uh, Sphinx. Okay, let's see what she does. Sphinx. So, the usual lineup, Musashi, Waver, and this time she's bringing Ryoma. Again, good choice because single target rider against a single uh, caster enemy. I always thought the Sphinx <laughs> attack animation was cute because it goes like, boom, boom, with this pause. <laughs> I know what Ian is talking about, yeah. Because they go, pum, pum. <laughs> Until they crit and then you're scared. <laughs> okay, good. All right. That's at least a lesson she's learned from last time. Waver defense buff um, right away. Okay, what do you want to do here? Charge MP, good idea. Because again, Musashi's not really going to do much on her own here, with even with her own Buster cards. Alright, good. You get uh, Ro Ryoma his MP. That was, that was. Um, arguably, uh, what I'm going to say here is arguably, let's see here. She decides to go with double waiver and then Ryoma. She should have gone with uh, Ryoma uh, Arts card first and then double waiver. So that way waiver can generate as much MP charge as possible for himself to be able to use his own MP as utility. Because towards the end, how much um, charge does waiver give himself here? 38, 50. So if she wanted to... If she wanted to, had she had gone for Ryoma Arts card first and then double waiver as mid and anchor, that means that waiver should have gone at least six. It should have gotten at least sixty percent, sixty percent charge, which means she sh she would have had the option, not ideal, but the option is at least there, of giving waiver his own first skill, so that way he can get his MP. Um, I don't know if I would I would really recommend that myself either because again I'm assuming this is a very weak uh, waiver where he's only level 80 uh, he doesn't have any foes at all he's only MP1 and he hasn't even uh, Ina hasn't done his uh, MP strengthening quest yet which drastically increases the um, the defense debuff that waiver can put on people um, because I think pre buff it only go at MP1 he only puts a 10% defense debuff which is like whatever it's laughable. Um, it's still something, but like, eh. It's like, what's that What's that really going to do? Um, but at 30%, the math changes. Because a 30% defense debuff actually does start to matter. So, yeah. Even then, I'm not sure if uh, if I would have recommended that. But it would have still at least been an option. And if Ina was in a position where her, her waiver did have her, his, uh, MP damage, uh, MP buff, not damage buff, because it doesn't do any damage, um, then yeah, it would have been a serious... Thing to think about. In any case, Ryoma. Oh, also the other reason why Ryoma's arts card should have been uh, a, a point first is because um, what is it? Like Ryoma has his own ten percent party charge with the second skill, and uh, we had what was it? Uh, Waver's uh, first skill, uh, his attack, his not first skill, attack buff on his third skill, would have, which would have also given uh, the party ten percent extra charge. And not to mention, even if Ryoma, Ryoma needed more, then you know you you, you always have you always have. Um, Waver's first skill, which is which is a thirty percent charge, uh, to top him off anyway. So that one, that one. I don't, 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 don't. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Again, cute until it starts critting you. Okay, so she's gearing up here. Ideally, um, because she's using plug suit. Um, ideally, she should actually swap out Musashi for, uh, another, for another backliner who might have better, uh, charge, ca uh, better buff capabilities. 
Um, matter of fact, I'm actually kind of curious to know, well, I, well, I mean, actually, no, Musashi might be her only, like, like very high-level, uh, servant, so I was gonna say, <laughs> first world problems here, because I'm so used to having every axe, uh, almost every servant in the game, and having them all viable. Um, yeah, Musashi and Waver might be her only viable servants on this account, because we know that this is not her own account. This is just an account that was provided by Aniplex, I think, so... So, uh, yeah, maybe she doesn't have really much, she doesn't have much of a choice here. Uh, even still, uh, just for, like, buff stacking purposes, like, I still would have liked to see, uh, Ina bring in somebody like, I don't know, Shakespeare or whatever. Actually, I forget what skill Shakespeare has his buster buff on, maybe it's his third buff, actually, I don't know, I forget. But, yeah, some other s servant who has, like, some sort of attack buff on their first skill, even if they're only at level one or something, so. But, yeah, clearly that's not on her mind right now. Anyways, so she uses all of her attack buffs here. Ryoma's um, uh, attack buff, his arts buff, wave his attack buff, and then pluck suit buff. Yep. Buff stacking properly. Ooh, here's a mistake. Small one, but uh, she started with 50% crit chance first. Um, you always want to start with um, the lower chance to crit first, and then uh, and then the higher chance to crit uh later because she goes with if i can pause if i can pause properly yeah so you can see here she starts with the 50 50 percent and then ends with 20 percent it should be the opposite way uh, way around because remember because remember cards do more damage uh the later they are in a chain so if bust if if her 50 percent chance buster card does crit uh and it does end up critting then well you might as well have put that on the anchor so that way it would do even more damage, right? Rather than um, doing less damage here and then likely the 20% is not going to crit, at least not compared to the 50%. So it should be the other way around. 20% first and then 50% after. Unless, of course, uh, Ryoma ends up critting with the 20% anyway, which could happen, but like, rationally, that's not what you want to do. <laughs> And then Ryoma uh, using his MP, Oreo showing up, fucking munching on some bitches. Hopefully Paco was in her chat. I think he was in during your first stream, I believe. Yeah, so he didn't crit that either. Uh, yeah, that crit that either. Ended up not mattering, but still, Ryoma did a decent chunk of damage. So yeah, as a general rule of thumb for um like like high HP uh, high HP boss scenarios like this, yeah, the idea is that you want to use servant MPs because they do so much more damage than uh, cards do. The exception, the obvious exception to that would be clearly uh, if you if you are running a dedicated crit build on like one or two one or two DPS servants, usually one servant easier to support a single servant than it is to support two of them at the same time or two crit dps's at the same time um but yeah otherwise uh mps are the way to go <laughs> so this is kind of a rough hand here there's not really much good options here i would say the only thing you can do here really is generate crit stars i guess um unless she really wants to um Unless she really wants to generate some more MP charge with uh, Ryoma, which I would understand too. Let's see what she does. Okay, just wants to go for uh, max damage here. At this point, I'm not too uh, stressed out about Ina using, uh, constantly using Musashi's Buster card because now that she's already done r a lot of damage to the Sphinx, using uh, Buster cards here actually does start making a difference. Like just regular unbuffed uh, face cards here. I mean, she it's not they're not unbuffed either. She's got she's got some attack buffs going too. So not a bad idea nowadays or n at this point, I should say. Uh, she should have used the uh, Ryoma's uh, char battery 10% um, charge. It's not much, but it's something at least. Yeah, at the yeah, she can use um, who is it? Ryoma's uh, second skill was a 10% party charge, and then Waver's first skill was which is a guaranteed 30% charge, and use them on Musashi here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, because this should be the last turn that she should have her uh, offensive buffs, her charismas, and the party arts buff from. 
uh, Ryoma. I mean, obviously the art spot doesn't matter on Musashi on this turn, but the, the charismas do, or the attack buffs do. So here, I think she could have killed the Sphinx, maybe, um, or at least done a ton of damage to it. Uh, if she had remembered to use Waver's first skill and then Ryoma's second skill to top off Musashi, because together they, they're 40%, it would be enough. And then Musashi uses her Buster uh, buff on her second skill, and then possibly her first skill too? Actually, assuming Musashi's skill levels are all level 1, actually it doesn't even matter in this case. Because like, it doesn't even give her a damage boost, uh, the, her first skill rather. All it would do is like let her Buster card like generate a few more stars, but that's about it. But I don't think she does that. I don't think she realized uh, that was that was something she could do. Oh, wait. Crit strength. There's no crit stars though. Oh, don't don't. Yeah. So she uh, doesn't realize that she can MP with Musashi on this very turn, and she just goes for max damage. Still decent damage. That did like what, like 40k? <laughs> oh no, Musashi-chan! Let's see if she uh, decides to uh, use um, use Musashi's MP here. Yeah, so this is the 10% charge. <laughs> <laughs> she's still. She, she, I, oh, something I tells me she's okay, completely so forgotten that Waver's first skill is a 30% charge. That's very surprising considering Ina should be like an old school FGO player, so she should know how Waver works. Okay. Like, it's very surprising that she hasn't really used Waver's first skill much at all. Like, I think she only she's only remembering it for the for the crit damage. Actually, there's a chance. So. I think one one possible reason why she's like she's like forgetting what uh, the the charge aspect of Waver's first skill, um, back in the day, back in like OG JP FGO days, like year one, like like the first couple of months type of shit, um, Waver was seriously underpowered. Like he's no, he was not the beast, the early game beast that we know, like most players know of him uh, as he is today, where he has like charge and all his skills, his skill buffs are all very good, and you know yada yada whatever. Um, back in the day, uh, Waver was seriously underpowered because um, he had no charge on any of his skills, none. I believe none at all. Maybe his first skill might have might have had a little bit of charge, but it wasn't thirty percent at least. I think I know that for a fact. Um, his defense and and attack buffs only scale from ten to twenty percent instead of the twenty to thirty percent that we know that know it does today. Um, and they, his his attack and defense buff, buffs didn't have the ten percent party charge either. So he only had a crit damage buff, maybe a little bit of single target charge, uh, ally charge. Um, his defense and attack buffs were weaker, way weaker than it, they were now, than they are now, and they didn't have any of their charge. So maybe Ina is like an OG OG, like a like a primordial whale type shit OG, um, where she what she remembers of Waver doing is when he before they buffed him to the frickin' moon. And so maybe that's why she keeps she keeps forgetting that her first that Waver's first skill uh, does, gives charge, because like at this point any other FGO player even casual players understand like they know that Waver has fifty percent charge and they try to take advantage of it wherever they can. So for Ina not like for her to keep forgetting that gives thirty percent charge maybe it's just like a maybe it's just a lapse in memory maybe it's just an innocent mistake that she's making but like. I, I noticed that she's doing she's done this I think for multiple fights now like she hangs on to Waver's first skill for not really much reason at all like Waver's first skill is is like one of those skills where you just use it turn one um, if you see that uh, a, a servant a teammate um, is very close to the MP like there's no there's no point in like holding on to it like say maybe you would for like Waver's attack buff so. I'm kind of confused here. Up oh, there she goes using Buster leadoffs again. Again, right? I'll keep saying it. <laughs> I'll keep tapping the sign. Buster leadoffs do not affect the damage of Buster MPs. I really love Masashi's design in FGO, you know? Okay. 
Uh, we'll see if this kills. Uh, there's a good chance that it might not, because this should only be an MP1 Musashi if I remember if I recall correctly. Again, it would have been a lot better had she had used Musashi's MP last turn, when she when she still had the uh, the charisma buffs and whatnot. Yeah, so because she used Musashi's MP, actually, even if she had, there's a chance that if she had used Musashi's MP first and then used Musashi's Buster card second in middle position, it might have been it might have made an actual difference. Might have because the uh, the Buster middle position has a 170% damage scaling. That could have been enough to deal about 2,600 more damage. So again. Leading off with Buster MPs, or leading off with Buster cards to buff, buff, a, a Buster MP does not make any sense. It doesn't work. And so here you can see the difference here where it's a difference between you killing an enemy and the enemy surviving with like, I don't know, a couple thousand HP. In this case, obviously it doesn't matter, this is just a story fight. But like, in like, challenge quests where like, it comes down to the wire, yeah, mis mistakes like these add up. And so they make a very, very real, they have a very real effect on the outcome of the fight. But at this point, she's got the she's got this fight basically in the bag. She's she's done her job. Okay, it's so. over here. Yay! It was close. And again. I have to say, my is not she, uh, what is it? She anchored with an arts the card. Again, Ryoma didn't need to because uh, <laughs> Ryoma was getting his MP one way or another. So she should, she might as well, uh, should have just let, uh, let off with or anchored with a quick card instead. Alright. Next fight. This video is going to be longer than two hours long. Lovely. Anyways, where is her next battle here? The Supper of the Sun King. Oh, Come right here? So okay. <laughs> Let's see if this is the correct uh, fight here that I'm looking at. It should be all archers. Wait for a game to load. Oh. Yes, they're all archers. Okay. So okay. here she brings um, Lancer Melt and Keo um, and so. Waver. Alright. Let's see what she does. Ooh, that arch chain, though. Arch chain, okay. Actually, did she have a waiver card? No. Oh, she only has regular scope on Kyo anyway. So, yeah, that makes sense. Skip forward ahead by side, uh, by a couple seconds. Alright, so this should be a double kill. Yep, there we go. Oh, she didn't use the uh, waiver's defense buff this time, and arguably, it's even more it's even more important on a berserker like Kiyohime because again, remember, berserkers take double damage from every class in the game, except from uh, from themselves. <laughs> berserkers uh, only take uh, only take fifty percent damage against themselves, which is kind of funny to think about. But they're the they're the berserkers are the only class that don't have true advantage against them uh, against other berserkers. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, I've come across a couple people over the years of me playing FGO who think, who've thought that, uh, Berserkers deal double damage to other Berserkers. That's not the case. They only, they still only do, uh, 50%. So, kind of ironic. Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, Ina unfortunately forgot to use Waver's defense buff, and this is the part where, this is the team where she absolutely shouldn't forget that, because again, Kiyohima is a Berserker, and they blow up in two hits. <laughs> Remember, Berserkers are glass cannons are your glass cannon archetype in this game. Or like the default, the de facto glass cannon uh, class in this game. So yeah, you want, and because she doesn't have any healing abilities, uh, you want to have Kiyohime preserve as much of her health as possible. So that way she can, you know, she can survive better into, uh, later into the game. So, yeah. And remember, Kiyohime has her own defense buff too. And even if it's only at level one, it's still something, because at least it'll stack with Waver's defense buff. So it'll be, it'll still provide, it'll still provide Kiyohime with a good degree of protection, or damage mitigation. Damn, so kind of disappointing that Ina's already forgotten to use uh, Waver's defense buff here. I think, I think Waver should be now. Yeah, this is good. Charge up a uh, Waver's MP. Now this will this will kill anyway okay. because this enemy's only got like uh, is only uh, only has like 10k HP, so. All right, simple wave one going to wave two. 
more uh, archer demons. Uh, some of them have pretty high HP. Or they all have hmm, higher HP. Mid one has 34k. Alright, so what can she do here? Um, I would argue, or I would I would um, vouch for her using Kiyohime as MP. Because Kiyohime already has her MP ready to go. Um, she uses bu her buster buff. Waver uses his attack buff. And together, this should be this should insta-kill everybody here. Or, this should be a one turn. Using Kiyohime as MP. So let's see if she decides to go for that. Yep, Buster Buff. Okay, no uh, attack, uh, no waiver attack buff. I mean, she might as well use it because she's gonna get uh, Summer Melts's, uh, what is it? Summer Melts's MP on next turn anyway, because again, 10% charge from, charge from uh, waiver's third skill. There you go again. No, no need to put a uh, Buster um, Buster Buff. Also, um, I think she's done this exact same thing from the previous turn where she has a Kiyohime Buster, uh, Buster uh, Brave Chain. And for some reason, she targets like a weaker enemy and then uses a Buster card. I don't understand what, what, what the point of that is. Um, I would love to know what Ian is thinking when she's doing this. Um, because, again, her NP, your NP is the strongest, uh, your strongest move that your servant has. If they have an if they have an MP that does damage, which is, which is most servants, um, there is no point in using a card first again, unless or uh, bust a card first at least, uh, unless again you have a quick or arts lead off or quick a quicker arts MP. Sorry, I'm confusing all these terms. Uh, FGO is a comp FGO is pretty complicated, obviously. Um, the like if she was going to use a buster card here i would understand it more if she had used it against the middle enemy the one that has 34k hp uh because like what is the logic behind softening up a weaker enemy when the np was going to probably kill anyway so i i don't know what she's doing with this i've already obviously i keep explaining the whole buster leadoff part um but i'm very curious as to why she thinks Targeting this first enemy with one of Kiyohime's Buster cards was a good idea. So, quite curious. Okay, obviously wasn't enough. <laughs> oh, does she want to? Does she? Did, did she want to try to kill one of the enemies off with Kiyohime's Buster? I mean, either way, that doesn't make sense because Kiyohime's MP is AOE. So every all the enemies were gonna get hit, was gonna get hit anyway, or they're all gonna get hit anyway. So again, what is the point? Like you'll notice here, Kiyohime should kill uh, the other enemy, uh, the the enemy on the left, because the enemy on the the enemies on the left and right both have the same amount of HP, or at least very similar, both at around like 19.5 k. So Kiyohime's MP should kill both of uh, should kill everybody, but it should definitely kill the enemies on the left and right. So like again, why did Ina think that using her Buster card first uh, to like kill one of the enemies when her MP uh, was was a good idea when her MP is gonna kill anyone everyone anyway? It's very curious. I don't know why. What, what's going? What's going on there? So. Yeah. So the middle enemy would have ended up surviving anyway. Obviously, obviously, Kiyohime's Buster uh, Buster Brave Junior kills everyone to begin with, so it doesn't matter in this in this case. But in a scenario where that enemy has more HP, um, like a considerable amount more HP, and she used uh, Kiyohime's Buster Brave Chain, um, yeah. You want it, you want to have Kiyohime's Buster cards on middle and anchor, so that way she does as much damage uh, damage as possible to the one enemy that's still standing. So that's uh, like you're gonna get sick of me. Uh, you're gonna get sick of me criticizing Ina's tendency to do this over and over again. But again, I have to drill this into everybody's minds. That's not what you want to do. Anyways, wave three. What you want? What did you do here? Oh yeah, waiver, waiver, waiver buffs. Uh, Melt has her MP charge uh, already. Um, one thing to remember about uh, Melt's what is it about Melt's uh, charge or her her kit rather. Struggling for words here. Um, been talking for about an hour and a half straight. Um, Melt's Summer Melt's third skill is a party drain. She drains her teammates' ch MP charges to fill up her own. I believe she can get up to like I don't know, like a a, a ridiculous amount, like 
60 or 80 percent i forget exactly how much it was but she gets a huge amount from her third skill assuming that her teammates her allies have the charge to that for her to drain um i believe again she can drain up to like 30 percent off of each uh ally uh off of each teammate so just keep that in mind that does allow her to double np uh in case she can't uh, in case she can't like if she's not in a looping uh, a looping team so yeah uh also um another thing thing to keep in mind about summer melts uh kit is that i'm assuming this is a max skill melt uh, summer melt because this is 120 so why would not be uh, why would she not be um you don't usually like get a servant to 120 level 120 and not give them max skills at the same time because otherwise what is what is the point um if you're going to take them that far you might as well make them as perfect as possible so at max skill level summer melt's first skill actually um actually comes back faster than it expires so what that means is you can effectively have melt summer melt effectively has a permanent arts buff uh barring any weird situation where enemies have buff removal effects uh but clearly these enemies don't um so yeah uh, with summer melt honestly you can just pop if you have a perfect melt or if you have a summer melt that has max skill levels um you can just pop her first skill in, right away uh because at the at, on its last duration turn because i think i believe it lasts like five turns or something five turns with a four turn cooldown so on the when it comes back you can actually pop her skill again and it'll stack with itself so you have one turn where melt does like i don't know 40 percent has a 40 percent arts buff instead of like only 20 percent or however much it is so anyways a little bit of trivia with summer melt there so yeah this should this should be easy just use it use just pop a uh, melts um buffs here and just go to town <laughs> but if she wants to be efficient with all her buffs you should uh, she should pop the arts buff uh and kill him as a uh, defense debuff and of course plug suit uh plug suit attack buff but clearly that's not what she's interested in doing yeah, again, this makes sense. This is okay. When she lead off, leads off with a Buster card, uh, if I can, yeah, if, she, if you can go to that real quick. Leading off with a Buster card here, again, makes sense. Because Summer Melt's MP is Arts. So even though her Arts MP does not get a damage buff from the Buster leadoff, uh, the rest of her chain will, with the Arts follow-up and then the, the extra attack follow-up. So this makes sense. Okay. And we get to watch uh, Summer Melt's MP. One of the better uh, animated uh, NPs for four stars. Because the, de the developers love Melt. <laughs> the devs have some um, favorites among the uh, servants. <laughs> I mean, makes sense because they love Sakura. And, you know. Melt is a soccer clone, so or a soccer face, I should say. Of course, they're powerful. Hey, level up. Ah, more okay. AP. I need. Yeah, more AP. <laughs> Clearly, she needed that. Okay, let's go into the next fight here. I believe this is also a solo fight, another okay, Sphinx fight. Okay, more of the same thing. Can't believe. Looks like she didn't change out uh, Kiyohime for Musashi. I think that's a mistake. I think that's. I think. I, if she remembered to, I think she would have preferred having Musashi up there first, but whatever. Hey, look, she, she used, uh, who is it, Waver's uh, defense buff. Uh, however, she's probably going to forget about Kiyohima's defense buff, too. But it is what it is. But yeah, this is good. Buff stacking. Um, ooh, she actually remembered to use Kiyohima's uh, defense debuff, too. Alright, that's good. Good that she uh, she saw that one. Um, Kiyohime's defense debuff gives like a 20-30%, I think it's since, he's, it's since the skill should be only level 1, it's a 20% defense debuff, uh, however, uh, it has a demerit where it gives whoever she targets with it a 20% attack buff too, so, that's not really gonna matter against like Waver or, or Ryoma, especially not against Ryoma, but it might, it might make a difference against, um, uh, Kiyohime, because it's basically counteracting Waver's, um, defense buff. Uh -huh. Which is why, again, she should she should have remembered to use uh, Kiyohime's uh, defense buff uh, herself or itself. But whatever, it's the proper play here anyway. Oh, she should also stun the enemy with Gander as well, but she's forgetting to do that. So twenty percent 
NP 50%, yeah. So she, this time she actually does do the uh, damage optimal. One shot? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't think so. If um if she had max level waiver buffs, maybe. But even then, that's only a 30% uh, attack buff. It's big, but like, eh. I don't know. This is 300k, and this is only a 100, uh, 100 level 100, uh, 100 Ryoma. I'm trying to trill my R's there or roll my R's there because Ryoma. Um, but yeah, I don't think this should be a one shot unless she crits her anchor busted card. Then that might make a difference. But the MP alone shouldn't kill. Maybe it will. Let's see. The issue is that Ryoma doesn't have great self buffs of his own. He really relies on supports to give him the bulk of the buffs that he wants. Like for example, Castoria or Atama Caster with their 50% arts mana bursts or whatever. Um, Waver isn't gonna be isn't gonna move the needle on this, I don't think. But we'll see how much damage it does. The no effect means that it survived, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it only did half damage. Actually, what MP level is this Ryoma anyway? Because it only did 130,000, uh, 130k, 137,000 damage. That feels very low. Let me check its, uh, his MP level. Yeah, it's MP5, because Ryoma is a welfare servant, so yeah, he should be default MP5. But, yeah, you can kind of see, um... You can kind of see how little damage he does without the proper buffs. Like, it looks like he has a ton of buffs, but if their their values aren't very high. And remember, again, Ryoma doesn't give himself very good, uh... His own buffs are not very high value. Like, his charisma is, like, only rank C+, plus or something, so it's only... It caps out at, like, 15% uh, attack buff, whereas Waver's at level 1 is, like, 20%. <laughs> Um, his arts buff is not that good either. I think it's like a twenty, like a party fifteen, or maybe at most twenty percent. So it's like his own buffs aren't that great. Besi and and that too, uh, that and um, her plug suit attack buff it scales from twenty to thirty percent, but it's only level one, so it's only twenty percent. So yeah, I'm not surprised that didn't, this didn't do a lot of damage. Or his NP didn't do as much damage uh, as she might have been hoping for. But oh well, that's kind of what you—that's kind of what happens okay. with, with um with an account like this. So <sighs> let's see if she uh, remembers remembers to um use her uh, stun. Okay. Yeah, she literally looks at Kyuhima's first skill and is like, "Yeah, what the fuck ever." Right? She does not uh, like she the 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 threat that berserkers have, or that the threat that berserkers face of being very, like very flimsy glass cannons just goes way over her head. Like she does not care about berserkers at all. Um, like you need to care more. You even if even when you're playing with five star berserkers, even five star berserkers can just melt in like a turn or two, uh, in a blink of an eye, especially if enemies crit them. And so, imagine how fast, like, lower rarity berserkers like Kiyohime dies, right? Especially because this is a very low investment uh, Kiyohime, where she probably doesn't even have foes. Uh, which means that her base HP is, like, only, like, 8,000 or so. So, yeah, that's a huge problem. And it's kind of, kind of a shame that Ina just, it, she literally looks at Kiyohime's first skill, and she's like, nah. <laughs> nah, I'd win anyway. Apparently so. Oh, and, uh, oh yeah, the epitome of, I hate to call Ina stupid, but this is really stupid. Like, no offense to Ina, I love Ina as a VTuber, obviously. No offense, I I'm trying not to, like, be an asshole about this, but as an FGO player, this is the epitome of stupid. There is no reason, like, I keep, I keep bitching at her about, like, how she shouldn't lead off with buster cards to try to buff her buster MP, because that's not gonna work. It doesn't get, it doesn't work like that. So, her, the fact that she's trying to use it as an anchor card is even dumber. This does not work. I'm sorry. And the sooner Ina understands that, the better. Again, does it really matter for, like, in, in, in like, in, like, a situation like this where she's trying to casually play through Camelot? No. But, remember, Ina is a very popular VTuber. And so a lot of people, a lot of people, when they, myself included, when they found out that, oh yeah, she's going to be playing through Camelot as part of like a sponsored series or whatever, right? Um, 
yeah, she's got a lot of eyes on her, right? She has, you know, at least like three, four thousand, maybe even five thousand people, depending on the day, watching her do, watching her play through, or watching her FGO streams, rather. And so that's a lot of people. And so they're gonna watch, especially the people who don't know any better, right? People who may be like like new FGO players, right? They're gonna watch someone like Ina play. They're gonna watch someone who they you know look up to and respect, like somebody like Ina. They're gonna watch her play FGO. Let's face it, badly, and um, they're gonna try to do whatever she does, and so that'll affect their experience with the game too. So again, I don't mean to be, or I don't mean to sound like I'm trying to like intentionally be super harsh on Ina. Again, Ina, I love Ina as well. She used to, she used to be my uh, hollow E and Oshi before uh, it changed to Callie like a year in or so. Um, but uh, yeah, like. I'm trying to do my part as an FGO, as an FGO player, and try to teach you guys on how not to play FGO or how to play FGO, and a part of that involve, part of that involves how not to play the game too. Oh. Yeah, so as you can see here, the, this dude, the Sphinx, doesn't even need to crit, and as long as you get bad targeting RNG uh, from from enemies, if they just keep targeting berserkers, they, they 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 their HP just evaporates just like that. So now all of a sudden, kill him is like one hit away from death. So, like, if Waver's, if she didn't use Waver's defense buff, Kyohime would be dead. Maybe I should have used it after all. <laughs> yeah, you should have. <laughs> yeah, and so, she, she had, she did this in the first, in her first FGO stream too, where she sees her servants getting hit a lot, and then she uses a defense buff. And that's exactly how you're not supposed to use it, because by the time, for example, in this case, Kiyohime gets low HP, your defense buffs don't matter, because the next time she gets a hit, she's dead. Right? Defense buffs only work when they're actually, when your servants actually have the health, um, to tank hits with. So, yeah. Like that's why I was praise, praising her so much when she was remember when she remembered to use Waver's defense buffs um, right at the start of a fight for like the first couple of fights of this of the stream. And so yeah, now this now her Kyohime's buffs don't matter or her defense buff doesn't matter anymore. Maybe it still might have if she had a healer or like some sort of way to heal Kyohime off her Mystic Code or something. But yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. Oh, uh, this is kind of a hard choice. I don't know what which one to use, either between a Kyuhime... Actually, no, I, I would still say Kyuhime Buster card uh, leadoff, and then uh, Ryoma Arts card, Arts card. At least in my opinion. Then again, I think it would be close between uh, Kyuhime Buster and Ryoma Arts, Arts, or Kyuhime Brave Chain with bu Buster Quick Arts. Let's see what the... Let's see what uh, Ina decides going with. Okay, she decides to go with um, Kyuhime Buster card... Uh, Buster Bra Brave Chain here. Uh, will this kill? This will be close. Okay, no. It'll kill. It was barely- it was very close, though, because, um, she didn't- she didn't get the overkill tag on it, uh, either. So that means that her last, uh, instance of damage on that was the one that killed. And that's cutting it very close. So, okay. Another fight done. Overall, she played it as best as she could, uh, with the knowledge that she had. I mean, thankfully, Kyuhime didn't even die, so at least that's uh, that's at least part uh, somewhat impressive. Uh, but yeah, definitely could have had could have done some things a lot better there. Where is the next fight here? I think I remember watching this part where she goes to uh, talk to uh, Ozzy. Yeah, where they meet Ozzy for the first time. Alrighty, let's see if I can finish this. Oh, there's no way this video is not at least two hours long. <laughs> so. Alright, so this fight, you're fighting against Ozzy uh, on Wave 2, but then you also fight against the Ifrita caster enemies on Wave 1, right? Uh. So, she, again, she starts with Kyo, she's bringing along um, Gajuna because she, for, for, wave, for Wave 2 against Ozzy. Okay, good. Wave her defense buff. Okay, she starts with the uh, uh, attack, attack buff too. Okay, so she's planning on using Kiyohime uh, NP and then Gajuna NP sec on, on second turn. So that's good. Again, with the bus lead off, don't do that. You should be doing Kyohime NP, and then, and then, actually, there's a, um, there's a nuance to this. So, when you're in a situation where if you're not confident that uh, an AoE NP will kill, uh, will kill everyone, like in this case, um, 
I think Kiyohima should still kill everyone here anyway because she's got the buffs uh, to go with it. But in the on the on the in in situations where you use an AOE MP, you're not sure if it'll kill everybody, um, and you want to try to and you want to make sure your fa your follow -up face cards kill anyway. Um, this is going to sound counterintuitive, but you actually want to use in this situation. Had uh, if Ina were to take my suggestion here or were to take my advice, um, I would tell her to use Kyo's Buster MP first. Right, because again, Buster leadoffs don't matter. Their damage, uh, their, their damage bonus doesn't matter for MPs. Um, and as for follow up attacks, instead of going Kiyohime middle, Kiyohime Buster card middle, and then Gajuna Buster card anchor, she should instead mid middle with um, or use Gajuna's Buster card as mid, and then Kiyo's uh Buster card as anchor, because that way Gajuna having uh, because obviously Gajuna's Buster card is stronger. Um. That will guarantee the kill on at least one of the enemies, and so that way that'll target switch when it gets to bus uh, when when it gets to Kiyohima's Buster card. So that way Kiyohima's card has a chance to kill his, uh, kill a second target too. If you're up against an enemy who sort who manages to survive um, an AOE MP and they have enough health or they have high enough health, sometimes your weaker Buster card cannot actually kill them, which means that your third Buster card is forced to uh, continue the damage on that weakened enemy already, and that'll waste a lot of damage. So, in this case, just to make sure to kill both these enemies at once, I would say Kiyohime Buster MP, then Gajuna Buster card, and then uh, Kiyohime Buster card as anchor, even though Kiyo's Buster card is obviously weaker than Gajuna's. But, in this situation, I don't think it matters. I think, I think Kiyohime should just kill everybody re regardless. Skip ahead here. Yeah, Kiyohima is already MP5 here anyway, because she's a 3 star, and it's relatively easy to... If you wail a lot anyway, or if you at least wail a decent amount, it should be easy to MP5 3 star servants. The permanent I ones, anyway. I did not! Yeah, so Kiyohima just kills everybody right away. Honestly, let me take a look at uh, her cards beforehand. Ideally, um... Because I'm at least I'm confident that I was confident that her key, that Q would have killed both of uh, both these enemies anyway because they don't have that much HP and she has it's this Q him as MP5 uh, also. Um, Optimally, she should have used Kiyohime's and uh, Kyo's and Waver's quick cards to generate a few stars going into next turn. Because again, if you know you're going, if you're confident that an MP will kill, you might as well get as much benefit as you can out of it and generate some stars. With the quick cards first, but either way, moving into wave two what? here. And so yeah, this should be second wave. This should be f this should be fairly quick. Um, the one threat that Gajuna has, um, Gajuna is an extremely powerful character. Obviously, he's a, he's one of the best berserkers in the game, just because of his sheer damage output. However, his his damage output hinges on. Uh, him being able to put his Buster Resist Down debuff that he has on his NP that he puts on enemies first before he does damage, it hinges his damage hinges on that. Um, this means that his that Gaudio's biggest counter, technically, is um, our servants with very high magic resist or any any degree of magic resist uh, because that gives them a chance to to um, resist uh, incoming debuffs. Ozzy, I believe, has magic resist. A? It's at least B rank, I think. Uh, let me check here real quick uh, to see how much uh, Magic Resist is. Yeah, Magic Resist is B. So he's got a 17.5% chance of resisting the Buster debuff that uh, Gajuna has. Um, the saving grace here actually is if Ina, p if Ina remembers to use Kyo's bust a defense debuff on Ozzy. Because if that, because Ozzy, oh not Ozzy, Gajuna only, car only cares about uh, or the the minimum the bottom line of Gajuna's uh, damage uh, bonus damage that he gets from his first skill against debuff enemies is as long as they have one debuff right it can be any debuff and it's fine uh, even like DOTs I think so just like Star Rail but um, as long as they have one debuff any debuff at all then Gajuna will get his uh, bonus damage from his first skill. Um, Obviously, it's much better if the if you know he could also put down his Buster Resist debuff as well. But uh, in case that gets resisted, then you want you want some other buff, uh, some other debuff on enemies at the very least, so that Gajuna's uh, damage uh, output doesn't like you know get shot completely. But 
Let's see what uh, let's see what Ina does here. Uh, I don't know what the point of of her using Waver's first skill on Gajuna there is. Um, yeah, because that just wasted the charge, and it's not you have it's not like you have crit stars here anyway. So yeah, what what was the point of that? Uh, she probably used that out of nervousness or something like that. I don't know. Okay, so she uses all the all her skills. Okay, yeah, she's forgetting to use. Um, she's forgetting to use Kiyohima's, uh, defense debuff. So, let's see if she gets unlucky and doesn't get her, uh, or, and Ozzy whiffs her, makes her whiff, wh makes her Gajuna here, uh, support Gajuna with, uh, his Buster Resist I debuff. Did not see anything. <laughs> she didn't even use, uh, Plug Suit buff either, which is disappointing. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? Alright, so pray for, uh, pray that we don't see a no effect. Okay, no, it hit, it hit, so she got, she dodged a bullet there. Oh, she just, the straight up one shots him, because this is Gajun. Uh, no, not really. No, she should have used, um, Kyuhime's defense debuff, and the follow up Buster Brave Chain is gonna kill anyway, so it's not like you need to worry, not like we need to worry about it. But. Ideally, she should have also used Kyuhime's defense debuff off her second skill, and then Pluck Suit, uh, Pluck Suit attack buff to really make sure Ozymandias dies there. But works out anyway. <laughs> All right, and then the next fight afterwards, right here, I believe. Elimin eliminating them at full. Yeah. yeah. All right, so this fight, she should be up against uh, some ink insects, uh, writer insects, and um, a spriggan here. Uh, looks like this is the same uh, lineup. God, you know, with the uh, with the uh, Kyo. I guess we don't really need MP here. That's fine. Oh, she actually uses uh, Kyo's MP ride. here uh, first, but I think, but yeah, clearly from what she's saying, she doesn't care. Um, I think these enemies have very low HP. Yeah, so she doesn't feel the need to like start really off with any card here or whatever. MP. Oh, That's it's all probably also because she doesn't have any bust cards here. So like, oh yeah, why would I lead off with an arts card or a quick card? So I don't know if bugs can talk. So yeah, they should that obviously kill. So um, ideally, I would have preferred her to save Kiyohima's MP for Wave Two, because uh, yeah, I honestly think this was kind of wasted on the on these bugs. Because again, she as you can see here, she deals 30k damage with Waver's uh, with Waver's attack buff. Like she could have. Let's see. Let, let me take a look at her cards actually, that she had that, that she got for Wave One. Uh, ooh, actually, mm, yeah, this is kind of a hard sell because she only has Waver's uh Waver's Buster card. And like the majority of her cards here are waiver, uh, waiver, and waiver's weak to writer cards or to writers because he's a ca he's a caster. So mm, I don't actually I don't actually blame her for um, using Kyo's MP here. Even then, though, I the better play here would have been to uh, just go with like a I don't know an arts chain or something or something like that. I don't just, it doesn't really matter what cards he, she uses here because they're kind of shitty. Um, but on the next turn, I would assume she st she'll start getting some of her, bu her Berserker Buster cards, and so that way she can use a Buster Brave Chain next turn, assuming she gets one, um, to finish off the insects here, because again, they don't have that much HP. So, she should have taken the damage on wave, on, on turn one, so that she can finish them off on wave, on turn two, so that way going to wave two, uh, with the, with the other insects that, the lineup of three insects that have like 21k HP. Then she can use Kiyohime's uh, NP there, and so it it'll, it would have made her life a lot easier. But clearly, that's not what she decided to do. She decides to use Kiyohime's NP right now and just go directly into uh, Wave Two that way. It was a swarm of bugs in a trench coat. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, here are the uh, here's the second wave of bugs that have 21k HP again. Should have used. Should have saved. Um, uh, Kyo Himez is uh, MP for this wave, but looks like she'll do it the good old-fashioned way. You know, honestly, I could probably use Juno's MP here. Yeah, I think she mentioned using. Um, I think she just talked about using Kyo's MP here instead of Wave One, so at least she understands. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what she uses here. She should die. She has enough Berserk cards. Just save it for the last wave. It's fine. Okay. And yeah, wave three should be pretty simple. Ah, see, worth it. 
Yes. And she gets, she's getting, F, and the Plex is obviously raging her decks here, because she's getting her Buster, her God Juna Buster Brave Chains, uh, where, whenever, like, literally every time she needs them. <laughs> Favoritism. All right, she actually remembered to use Kyohima's second, uh, second skill there. So yeah, nothing much to say there. We got to watch God Juna blow up the earth again. Or blow up the universe again. <laughs> Must have been this guy who said, yeah, right? Okay. And, uh, he'll probably survive, yeah, but the follow-up, uh, Buster Brave Chain should obliterate this dude. And there we go. I still think it was the bugs that okay. changed. And yeah, that's the last, um, that's the last, uh, what is it? Oh, Fight that she does for the stream. So, yeah. Hey! Two hour long video. Wonderful. But, uh, yeah. I'll keep it, uh, I'll end it soon. I'm not gonna yap on like I usually do, so. Yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you guys have learned something from me, um, yapping about Ina's, uh, FGO gameplay. So, yeah, looking forward to doing this more. Uh, <laughs> I guess all these videos are going to be, like, at least two hours long or something, but as long as you guys enjoy it, um, hopefully that's the case anyway. But, yeah, now officially this video is two hours long, but thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next part of this series. So, make sure to go watch, obviously, make sure to go watch uh, Ina's FGO streams themselves, and, uh, yeah, take care, dudes, and we'll see you guys in the next part of this, of this series. Peace.